Protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba. Protectors of the Suna. Okay, you can start. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah and peace be upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companion, and all of those who follow his footsteps till thereafter. Today, inshallah, we are going to continue our classes for tadabbur, uh, reflection, and thoughts, and to live with the meaning of the verses in the Holy Quran. So today I'm going to, uh, to start uh, to remind you with Surah Al-Falaq. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ Say we, refuge, we seek refuge in Allah, the Lord of Al-Falaq, the Lord of all the creation. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ from the evils of whatever has been created, from the evils of all the creations. Everything that has been created can give you a good things or bad things. And we have heard about the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. How huge was it? And it was a huge disaster. People have been suffering for about four days. Subhanallah. Have you ever thought about that? So, Earth is one of the creatures. Allah has created the Earth. And it can bring evil things and good things as well. So remember, we ask Allah to protect us from any evils, from anything that has been created. At the time of the Prophet wasallam, he was standing at the mountain of Uhud. And all of a sudden, it started to shake. So the Prophet وسلم, put his hand on the mountain and he said, be stable, don't shake anymore. You have a prophet and a companion at the top of you. And then it was settled down. Don't underestimate the powerful invocation, dua, but if you have sincerity, if you have sincerity, Allah will protect you from whatever circumstances or any difficulties and hardship. And now we're moving to Surat An-Nas. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ So you seek, say, you seek refuge in Allah, the Lord of Anas, the Lord of mankind. So, and then the next verse, قُلْ أَعُوذُ رَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ The one who owns mankind, all mankind, belongs to him. Nobody can own you. Nobody can claim that he is the owner of mankind. He's a master. He's like the, uh, the creator of mankind. And the third verse, 
إله الناس The God of mankind But you go from Rabb, the Lord And the Lord means He has given you the power He has given you the provision He has given you food He has given you the money He has given you the support He has given you your health He has uh, managed your life And make your body functioning Even when you, while you are sleeping Without any action from you So you have, to, you have come to this life With many, many, many na'am, bounties and blessing from Allah ta'ala That you cannot imagine The way your eyes see, the way your ears, the way your subhanallah, everything Everything, if you look at your body You cannot think about how pleased you are Everything Everything around your body is by Allah's power, Allah's wisdom, Allah's hikmah. Um, so the science, the technology, and they're still searching for how body is functioning. So that's the Lord, Al-Razq, Al-Khaliq, the one who created. Um, the one who provide, the one who protect, the one who guard you, the Rabbinness. And from that meaning, in Arabic language, they say, Rabbul Usra, the Lord of the family. That's for the father. Rabbatul Bayt, for the wife, for the mother. Rabbatu al-bayt So look how much they care about their kids But Allah, his care is beyond that قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ Allah is the one who controls everything Nobody can bring you harm Or bring you benefits But Allah Malik in Nas. Nobody can claim to be the king because Allah is the king of all the king. And in the hereafter, Yaqbudullahul Ard, Allah will hold the earth between his hands. Allah will fold the, the, the skies with his right hand. Look at that. The whole sky. The whole skies. And he will say, I am the king of all the king. Where are the kings? To whom? To whom the universe belong? Lillah al al qahar Everything belongs to Allah. Al-Wahid, the one, al qahar Subdue anything. Overpower anything. Nobody can claim that but Allah. So look at How Allah is, Masha, yani, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Everything is under His control. So, what about Anas? What about mankind? What about mankind? Look at people during that earthquake. They slept and they didn't wake up. Or they, you know, they were, some of them, they still survived, but under the Earthquake rubble. Subhanallah. So we have to, th to think about that. We have to put yourself under circumstances. Everything can face these difficulties and hardship. So you have to seek the refuge 
with Allah, the Lord of mankind. Malik in Nas, Ilah in Nas, the God of mankind. But who believe that He's He's our God? Only those who believe that there is no true God but Allah. Those who worship Allah, there are many people believe that He's the Lord, but they don't worship Him. So they can't be under the third category, the third verse, ilahinnas. So when you think about the three, the three verses, you have to believe in the Lordship of Allah and the oneness of the Lordship of Allah. And that's the first one. And you have to believe that all mankind belongs to Allah, not to a king, not to a president. And then you have to be among those who worship Allah. Ilahi nas Ilahi nas And if you bring this to your heart and while you're reciting this surah, you will be in a different uh, condition and you will revive your spirit, elevate your soul, to be in a different status. So, inshallah, I will stop here and then Sister Laila can start to um, manage the discussion. Jazakumullah khaira. Okay, alhamdulillah, these three verses you seek in refuge in Allah, He's the Master, Lord, Owner of all mankind and everything else. He is the God. He went from Lord to God of all mankind, meaning that everything is subjected to him. He's the creator of good. He's the creator of evil, okay? He's the only one that can alleviate any uh, evil from you and he can also take away any good. So you must be amongst those who worship him alone. Now, this is the part of your assignment. Let's see how many of you did the homework. How does Allah show you in your personal life that he is the Lord, the master, the God of everything, including man? Who's going to start us off? And it's got to be in your personal life relating to you today, not from a child all the way up through adulthood. Uh, let's start us off with uh, Sister uh, Latifa. Mm -hmm. As-salamu alaykum. All right. The definition of master, one who has the ability and power to use control or decompose of something. Allah is the master of mankind. We often hear non-Muslims say that I am the master of my own fate. They say this without knowing or understanding that Allah is in control over all mankind. He is the one who can make changes happen. Allah can control things in our lives holistically or individually. He controls the air we breathe, the weather we feel, and the light and dark we see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can enhance any of those things or turns them into a severe adverse condition as the earthquake that took the life of the mother but saved the child. Allah can also individualize for us as well. Hadith say, if you go to Allah walking, he will come to you running. And I can see this because this has shown me, I, this was shown to me by the changes in my life. I have received better home accommodations and peace within my surroundings. I have also noticed the subtle changes in my offsprings, who I have noticed are beginning to get closer to a lot through my actions and showing them what I'm doing. As I make do it for them and for myself, Allah is the master of all mankind, and he's in control of helping us to stay on the straight path. 
Alhamdulillah, Dr. Asim. Yeah, Jazakallah khairan. So um, by giving an example of uh, the mother passed away and the baby, a newborn baby is still alive, subhanallah. Because this is the will of Allah. This is the will of Allah. Allah um, made everything um, the way he wants Allah will say Kun fayakun, be and it will be and remember one of the prophets he was swallowed by a whale and subhanallah he was saved and then um, the, the big fish uh, threw him on the bank of the river or the sea and then he was able to you know to heal and then he went to his nation and then they start to believe in him and mashallah um, it was a good lesson for human being you will find from the stories of the prophets and the messenger many lessons and this will strengthen your faith. Allah, when, when he send a prophet or a messenger to his nation, Allah gives them like physical miracles, something that they can see in order to believe in him. Um, so Allah made something supernatural. Like it changed the, the, the stick to be a snake, a real snake for Prophet Moses. And then when he met the, uh, the magicians in their competition, so the magician looked at his stick and they looked at theirs and they say, the only, the only one can convert a thing to a different thing like the only one who can convert something doesn't move like a stick to a real snake moving around is the creator and they said look at ours they still stick on the floor or on the ground but because we played magic so we have influenced the eyes of people so that they can see it is moving, but it is not moving. So that's Allah's power is to change the condition of things to a different things. So Wallahi, if you live within the meaning of the Holy Quran and uh, you, you live the stories of the prophets and the companion some companion of the Prophet وسلم, they were given such karamat like something amazing in their battlefield I remember a story of one of the companion he was like uh, like traveling and he he saw everybody is coming back from the, the, the highway. He said, what is going on? They said, there was a lion. In our way, we are very worried. We are afraid that he will eat one of us. So the companion of the prophet, I forgot his name. He went on and on and he spoke to the lion and he said, this is not your way. This is not your uh, like a street. You go to the desert and you will find your prey over there. Go away. And he went away. Subhanallah. So this is the power of the heart. Let me bring this to your attention. Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We have created human being to be in the best status. 
in the best condition, the best creation. We have honored the children of Adam. When the ulama looked into that, they said, oh, is that his power? No. The lion, the elephant, the camel are stronger than man. We know that. Is it our, like, hearing? No. Because there are some animals they can hear better than us. Is it by smell? No. Dogs can smell better than me and you. Is it by eyes? No. There are birds who can see fish inside the ocean. So what is the issue? Our heart. Our heart. This is what differ human being from other uh, creations. Our heart. Your heart with which you can think and you can reflect and you can see. Your heart is the machine, is, 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 is the, the, like the, the thing that you can see through Basira. You can see through your heart. You can understand through your heart. MashaAllah. That is not given to any other creations or creatures. And now when you look at the companion of the Prophet, compared to us, you would see the difference. Their heart was different. Their heart made them special to the extent that they were, mashallah, they were sometimes equivalent to 10, equivalent to 1,000. Sayyidina Amr, Ibn Amr ibn al-As. He sent a message to Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab asking him for support to send him a support to his, to his army. He said, I need 4,000. He sent him four companions, only four, and he said, each of them is equivalent to 1,000. So you got what you asked for. Subhanallah. So how they become equivalent to 1,000? By the strength of their faith and their heart. The strength of their faith and that is in their heart. That is in their heart. Um, I know I went on to explain that, but uh, um, when you read the Holy Quran with the reflection, with understanding, you will elevate your spirit, elevate your soul. You will become different. Um, not just to say and recite without understanding the meaning. Um, who's next? Yeah, mashallah, I like how she broke that down, the meaning of how Allah is the master and then how she applied it, how he mastered her life shaped and changed like you said change she changed her life and, and she he's making the change with even her children you know from them how their hearts are changing from seeing her good job on that uh latifa okay let's hear from uh sister sakina sakina go ahead yes allah shows me that he is the master of over all mankind from the simple act of awakening me every day with the ability to move my limbs to get out of bed and to be blessed with a sound mind and body. He masters who comes into my life and when and how they will leave my life. It is Allah who is the master over the calamities that test mankind as well as the sunshine that brings relief after the calamity. Yes, these things, uh, yes, these things show that Allah is the master all of all mankind, but it is up to mankind to, to accept and make the most of our lives and situations, be they good or bad. Master. Yeah, you're right. The master of mankind 
but uh, people should believe sincerely with sincerity that he is a master of mankind. So they don't ask or invocate anything but Allah. They don't uh, seek support and help from anyone but Allah. And this is to um, like to exercise the oneness of the Lordship of Allah. And then going to the Godship of Allah, we should obey Allah and worship Him. And when we say to worship Him, and to believe in the Godship of Allah. It doesn't mean offer your daily prayer and pay zakah and fast Ramadan. Alhamdulillah is coming soon. Um, and go for Hajj. All this kind of worship is just actions. But you need the reflection of all this action into your life. So, because in the Holy Quran, it says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَى عَرْفِ حَشَعُ الْمُنْكَرِ الصَّلَاةَ should um, help you and support you to stay, off, to stay away from sins and mistakes. It should help you to avoid haram and mistakes. Same as zakah. وَمَنْ لَمْ تَنْهَى صَلَاتُهُ عَرْفِ حَشَعُ الْمُنْكَرِ فَلَا صَلَاةَ لَهِ so you, we have to live our life according to our worship, according to your worship. So again, now we are talking about the reflection of these ayat and how to ponder by this ayat in your life. But in the meantime, all kind of worship that you offer it should have a reflection in your life. It should have, like, it should impact your life and make people a better Muslim, inshallah. Jazakumullah khaira. MashaAllah. Layla. Yeah, that was wonderful, Sister Sakina. MashaAllah. Okay, let's hear from Sister Jamila. I seek refuge more each day in the most in the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask him to protect me in this world and the next world to come, because he is he is the governor and the creator of his whole universe and everything he has created. The more I reflect every day, it's becoming more clearer that no one has the power or authority to change Allah's commandments, rules, or laws. May Allah help me to be obedient. Allah can do whatever he wants to. And he can turn the world upside down like the earthquake in Turkey and its surroundings that really shook my very inside. How powerful, how powerful God is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the master who has created and sent prophets, messengers, and helpers, peace and blessings be upon all of them, to carry out his good news and warning to humankind to reflect and to act appropriate on earth. I realize Allah's kingship will never die. He has placed earthly kings in different places here upon this earth to rule for a short period of time. Some of them carried out their terms in a good manner and some were very evil, but they will be held accountable for all of their actions, just as I will be held accountable for my own actions here on earth. Yea, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek refuge and protection because I fear your punishment. And on the day I have, I have to face you and I 
I submit to you to the best of my ability and constantly stay in repentance to seek protection from listening at the whispers of the shaitans and my personal den and whims that and those who practice evil, evil things can lead me on the wrong path. Thank you. Jazakallah uh, khaira. So even if uh, like a uh, uh, good believer faced hardship and difficulties, um, do you think this is going to be a banishment from Allah? Think about it. Like if you feel that you have faced an evil and it has an impact on your life, so in order to understand that and to have the true ref reflection about that, any disaster is starting from any disease, even if you uh, tripped and you fell down for anything, like uh, you're running and then you, you flip on something and then you injured yourself, up to a disaster like an earthquake. All of this for Mu'min, it's a trial, it's a test. It's, it is a tila in order to elevate your credits. So you gain the reward from Allah. So that's for your good credits. But for non-believer, it is a punishment from Allah. So that's how you look at it. So whatever happened to us, even if you, th if you think that this is an evil, it will be uh, in your record as a good deeds. Jazakumullah khaira. Yeah, Sister Jamila, I'd like to ask you, so if you were living in Turkey right now and you were living right there where they, that earthquake occurred, how would you know if it's a punishment from Allah or if it's a test? You personally, how would you know? Because this is a question a lot of Muslims ask. How do I know? I mean, there's, Turkey's a Muslim country, okay? But for some, it's a punishment. For others, a test. How would you know, Jamila? Just based on what you've learned here. Jamila, your mic's not working. Okay, Latifa, okay. there, there. Okay, okay. The only thing I could think of this week it was that uh, while I was watching that on on um, the Weather Channel, is that from reading from the Quran, uh, Allah said He will bring. You know, He there's a certain part of time when he will bring you know like destruction to a nation and when I saw that and I thought oh my god look at there and then the thing about that baby I'm a little sensitive about that but the thing about the baby they couldn't save the mom and dad no did you did you, did you hear the question How, yes, if you were that. living in Turkey if you were there I don't care about the news okay. it's a Muslim country how would you know if it's a punishment or a purification. If you were there. If I was there. How would you yeah, know? Yeah, because, Latifa, because. How would you know? Yeah, you guys there, should there know were, this answer. You should know. The, there are people who traveled and stay in the hotel there and then they didn't wake up. Right. Then there's some people it, that the earthquake didn't bother them at all. How would you know, Sakina, if you were there? Because this is a question that they asked the prophet too, uh, even in his time, because calamities didn't just start in 2022, 23. Earthquakes, Allah has been sending this type of stuff since Allah created man. And the people always ask when this happens, the first thing they do is say, why me? You know, and the prophet gave us that answer. 
how would you know if it's a punishment or a test? Sakina? Yes, you would know based on the life you were living, your character, if you were doing the things that you should have been doing, such as prayer, fasting, those things would let you know if it was to be uh, a purification or a punishment if you were living a sinful life, not doing the things that you were supposed to be doing. Simple answer. I want all y'all to write that down because those are the emails I've been getting all day. And the prophet answered this question. Allah says in the Quran, he sends calamities for a reason. He said, for some it's a punishment. For others, it's a, a means of purification. He sends calamities as a means of cleansing the earth of corrupt people. So when it, it happens to you, if like right now, if an earthquake happened right here where I live right now, like the prophet said, the first thought that comes to your mind when it happens lets you know. You know what you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. And you know what you're not doing that you should be doing. And as soon as the calamity strikes, it hits you. So yes, Turkey is a Muslim country. From For some of those people, that earthquake was a punishment because they know they ain't praying, they ain't wearing hijab, they ain't fulfilling their obligations. But for the righteous Muslims who are fulfilling their obligations, it's just another test of, for them. It's another means of purification. So it's an individual thing. Can we say the whole country is being punished? I don't know because everybody's in different levels of faith. Allah says towards the end of time, he will send earthquakes because we will have abandoned his laws. We would have abandoned the Sunnah, which you know we have today. You know, they don't practice Islam in none of these countries like they're supposed to, not even Saudi. So for some, it's a punishment. For some, it's not. It's based on, like Sakina said, where you are in your Akita and your practice. And that's the answer to that, guys. And for some, it's going to be a martyrhood. Yeah, for some. One of the highest status. For the believers. Not yes. No, no hypocrites. And Everybody is going to face death. Right. No matter what. Mm -hmm. So we have to come to this day at any time. Yeah. So if you if you are a true believer, if you 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 like you, you believe in Allah with sincerity and certainty and with the love and with the knowledge, don't worry about anything that happened to you. Exactly. Because you are with Allah. Exactly. And, and when they one when they or another you are going to meet with Allah. Mm -hmm. Whether you yeah you sleep on your yeah you sleep on your bed and then the next morning you are not here. Yeah. And don't worry left. about the children. That's another thing too. A lot of the Muslims are focusing on that baby, like Jamila was saying. They did that during the prophets' times too. Oh, the children. The prophet said, Don't cry for them. They're flying around the throne of Allah in the green birds. Don't cry for them. Like he said, worry about yourself. This is a sign from Allah. Allah sends calamities as a sign from him, a wake up call to us that we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing. Okay. So like he told the companions, don't cry for those children. They're in exactly. paradise. You better cry for yourself. You know, figure out what it is that you're doing that you should not be doing and vice versa. So don't get tripped out when y'all watching television because uh, the, the media will sens sensitize people, you know. They you don't know? believe in Allah. Yes. And they don't understand. Some of them, they may be Muslim, but they don't have the understanding. Right. That's you know? why they followed, they followed the non-believers' thoughts. Yeah. And that's how so, those female companions were. They would say like that, that story we went over, you know, her son, she said, oh, prophet, I put, put both my sons, you know, I love them. And they both fought and they were killed. Tell me, where are they? He said, they're in the highest Jenna. That's why Muslims, we don't cry like that when something, stuff like this happened with our children. You know, subhanAllah, we see the good in everything as Muslims. Okay. Exactly. 
Yes. We see the good in everything. Alhamdulillah, those children are spared. Those children are, are they died. It's just sad. Yeah, you. but they're in a better place. And they'll be making dua for their parents. They'll be making dua if, for their parents, you know, subhanAllah. Allah. So don't focus on all that, all that sadness and all that stuff. You know, as Muslims, we see the good in all things. And like the prophet said, always check yourself. When Allah sends his signs, Look at yourself and ask yourself, what are you doing that you shouldn't be doing? How can you change to get in the pleasure of Allah? So you have you have to look at everything with a special eyeglasses. The Quran and Sunnah. Right. Don't follow people's thoughts about everything without thinking. Don't follow their thoughts blindly. Because these people, they are very attached to dunya, to the life. They don't care about the hereafter. And that's why they misunderstand many things in this life. And we have to remember, too, with these Muslim countries, what the Prophet Wasallam said, whenever we fail, you're in a Muslim country. Whenever you fail to enjoin the good and forbid the evil, Allah will send destruction to everyone, but he will raise you up and judge you individually. Exactly. So exactly. I want you all to keep that in mind about Turkey, Syria, Palestine, and all these other places. These are Muslim lands. This is Allah talking to us, doing what he said he would do. I will destroy you all. Because you didn't enjoy the good. You didn't, you failed to forbid the evil, but I'll raise you up and judge you individually. Y'all get that? All this stuff was answered by our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We just have to live it, practice it. And every, everywhere, wherever you go, whenever you go, there is um, like an opportunity or um, something that may happen and people die if you are flying yeah. in the aeroplane if you are taking a ship sailing in the ocean you don't know you, you heard about Titanic yeah. they said oh this Titanic will never drown but it happened in the first trip how many Air jet has been destroyed and collapsed. So people who you know who drive cars. So everything can happen to anybody at any time. But because this is a huge disaster for a huge land, and it happened all of a sudden, uh, destroyed like many things. So people think about it and, you know, they are, uh, you know, uh, very emotional about that. But if you think about it in an, you know, with, within the Quran and Sunnah, there are many verses in the whole Quran and a hadith to give you the answer. And Alhamdulillah, Sister Lila has summarized that. Jazakallah khaira. Let's go back. Okay, Sister Zarina, go ahead. <clears throat> yes, alhamdulillah. Um, when I ponder on his um, ayah, and um, I look at the definition of master, one having authority or power to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience, and the other definition, one having control. And it just was a reminder to me about um, the dangers um, of committing shirk or associating partners with Allah. Um, a lot of things that we, um, like I look at myself, my life and the things around me, um, everything in a lost creation, in a way, kind of proves that it's not our masters. Not in that sense that it's alive, but just reflecting on their purpose or their function. And um, I look at um, objects, people, um, even my own self, my own mind, my, mind, my um, emotions, my ego my um, reputation. 
And I noticed that everything that Allah has created, um, it dies, it grows old, it can be destruct, destroyed, lost, it can abandon you. It has basic limitations, it's absent, at least at some point, or it can disappoint you, or me, I should say. And um, we always have those moments where we feel like we're in, like I feel like I'm in control and or seemingly in control. And um, then I have those moments where I'll get reminders that, no, I'm not. I, everything relies on the law, needs the law to exist, inc including myself. Um, even the people when they support us, support me, are there for me, um, let's say during grieving or during death. Um, even that, those things have limitations and um, need a law. And um, no matter how much support I get, how much love, how much I'm surrounded by other people, if I don't call on a law and remember that I rely on him, I won't even get that comfort, sanity, or peace of mind. Even that loyal dog or companion um, is limited and not our masters. Even the cell phones, we keep them by our side. We, and when it's lost, we realize that we cannot even rely on those things. Our children, our family. Um, I, I, the biggest disaster to me is not earthquakes, but to take other Allah's creation as a master when in, in, in truth it's not. That's the biggest disaster. It's not always the big things that we see, but the things that people don't ponder on and see. And I thank Allah for all the times when I get reminded of that he's the master and that I rely on, and I can only rely on him. And, um, and those things like, you know, my ego or my reputation or embarrassment. I, I just, whenever things happen, I just, it's a reminder to say, um, Allah, thank you for reminding me that I'm really small and, and nothing. And I seek forgiveness for the moments where I might be distracted by his creation and um, maybe too reliant on his creation. It, it's not always intentional, it's the hidden shirks. So I, and I always ask a lot to protect me from those hidden shirks because um, that's the biggest disaster. And that's pretty much what I have to say. Alhamdulillah, Dr. Asim. Yeah, Jazakallah khaira. So uh, if we go to the senior house, the senior homes and look at people over there, um, you will find some of them, they were very strong, but they lost their strength. They were healthy, they lost their health. So nothing is guaranteed in this life. Uh, nothing, like nothing will remain with you, as you mentioned. So everything can be given and taken at any time. So... Um, the only one can give and take is Allah Tabarakat But on the other, like on the, on, their, on the other hand, there are people who can live for long life till the age of 100. I have seen them. MashaAllah, they are healthy. So this is on the hand of Allah. So um, we have to prepare ourselves for any condition that may happen to us. Um, Jazakallah khair sister you have brought this uh, thoughts I like that Alhamdulillah yeah. okay. Sister Sabrine go ahead okay. can you hear me yes okay I seek refuge with Al Malik the king of mankind, the sovereign of all creation, once a mere wonder, I traveled aimlessly without purpose until El Qadir the all-powerful raised me in good character and nur. Though I am not perfect, ar is the great provider 
of all that we need in creation. All that he has created. And he is the owner of mankind. Allah is my sustainer, my only sustainer. And I depend upon him for all things. El Walid, El Wakil. Without him, there is nothing. Just like a lucky. Okay. Dr. Asim, there's our poet. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. I, I like you, you to comment on her point, so please. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, what she, I like the way she did that. She took different names, other names of Allah to show and prove how he is the master of all mankind. We're dependent on him for sustenance. We're dependent on him for help. We're dependent upon him, you know, for protection. So she used different names of Allah that we've talked about, which I like how she did that. That's what a poet does. She took other names of Allah that we discussed and showed how those names with, uh, uh, within themselves make him prove that he is the master over all the creation. Without him, there would be no creation. That was wonderful, Sabrina. I hope you put this all in your little book. Masha Allah, I agree with you. I agree with you, Masha Allah. Like uh, uh, having uh, the beautiful names of Allah uh, added to uh, the uh, lordship and the godship of Allah, and uh, um, His name is Al Malik. Masha Allah, she made it in a beautiful way. So, um, this way, I heard Raz yes, Al Raza, the, the provider. Of, well, I see, I think, and Wakil. Oh, Al Wakil. Oh. So, mashallah, I like people also, um, subhanallah. So, uh, try to have the beautiful names of Allah that is related to the verse. So, the Lordship, meaning like the Creator, Al Razak, the provider the sustainer, the uh, al-wakil, so the uh, the supporter. So uh, these beautiful names are related to the lordship of Allah. And then the godship of Allah, you bring all the beautiful names related to that. So this will make it, mashallah, uh, touch your heart when you pray. Jazakallah khair. That was wonderful. Okay, uh, Sister Fah May, go ahead. Okay. okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can. Okay, um, so I said that Allah shows us that He's the master. Um, he's the master over all mankind through our day-to-day -day lives. For example, for me, like, um, okay, so here's a little short story from my personal life as to how. Allah shows that he's the master of all mankind or overall mankind. And like I had this coworker who for some reason just kind of started being like cold and just try to like sabotage me at the jobs. And I didn't really understand why or what her motives were. But um, I mean, she thought that she was going to like, you know, report me to the HR, which is what she did. And so um, and I was like, OK, I was kind of upset. But then. Every, well, I was upset about everything, but one of the things that first came to mind was just like, I'm just going to take it to Allah. So I took it to Allah and I didn't really, um, I didn't really ask Allah to punish her or curse her or anything like that. Because I don't know if I did something wrong or not. I didn't really understood. So I just pretty much asked Allah to just give her what she deserved, which is what we learned here. And to my surprise, like the following week, I got called into the HR and they were and I was like, well, I don't know what this is going to be about, but they were basically like that person was wrong for what they did and they were at fault and it wasn't like, there was nothing that I did wrong. And I was like, oh, wow, really? So I was like, she thought that she was, you know, getting me in trouble, but just ended up getting herself in trouble. So then I was like, I thanked a lot for that because I knew because it's because of that supplication that I made. 
And the way I relate this to how he's the master over all mankind is Allah is not only the master of us as Muslims, but he's also the master of the unbelievers, whether they believe in him or not. He's the master of all of us as mankind. So it's all human beings. And, um, and I just realized, you know, just with that incident, how if we put our problems and situations in Allah's hands and just say, here, you know, take care of this for me, because I don't know if I would have done, if I would have took it upon myself, I could have probably brought more harm than good and just made things or the situation worse. But with the way I handled it, I'm glad I did the I did what I did and I handled it the way I did because it did brought about the positive, you know, outcome. And, you know, like I said, I just made me realize the greatness of Allah and how it is. he is master over all of us by through our problems and our issues and our hardships and our trials and everything is pretty much is under his control if you just leave it in his hands. So that's pretty much why, how I pondered this verse. Um. Yeah, to say hasbi Allah wa na'mal wakil, Allah will be sufficient for you. Uh, Allah will defend you. So at that time, the Prophet Sallallahu he was sitting and uh, with uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Hazrat Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And then someone came and started to insult Sayyidina Abu Bakr, to like, to say bad things, insulted him. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr didn't say anything. And then uh, he was going on and on and on. And then at the end, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr replied and insulted him back. So the Prophet Sallam went away. So he left. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr went after him and he said, what was going on? Did they do something wrong? He said, uh, when you didn't answer him, Allah sent an angel to reply instead of you to um, like to punish him but uh, when you started to react on your way uh, and you say the word back to him the angel left and the shaitan came to be between you and him and I don't stay in a place where the shaitan is so um, but to reach to this level you have to be very close to Allah um, in order to receive the uh, like the uh, the answer from Allah. So um, if somebody uh, brings you harm, uh, did something bad, so you ask Allah wa ta to support you against that. But in the meantime, like between uh, Muslims, you forgive one another because you never know. Um, the uh, Somebody may do the mistake or they say something uh, without intention. Sometimes they do this with good intention. But uh, um, uh, it may appear that uh, they have done something wrong. So this is a very complicated issue based on the intention. So um, if, if that happened between like uh, you and brother or sister in Islam, so the best way is to forgive one another. Um, and if you do that, Allah will forgive you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Alhamdulillah, that was good. Yes, yeah, Sister Sahar, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I think the three the three names that Allah mentioned followed by each other uh, we are we are uh, discussing today the Lord and the God and the King. These three names or three adjectives was mentioned by by this following to know to let us know who is the one who are uh, who we, who we are asking for His help. He is the one the one who is capable of everything the capable of impossible things. I trust God's wisdom, definitely. Even if there's something I cannot understand, so I, I, I believe there is wisdom, there, Allah has meaning or has, has uh, there's lots, lots of wisdom behind. I, I didn't get, I, I can't understand it now, but one day I will know. 
this, this is concerning the, uh, the earthquake as you were discussing. And I want to review uh, the meanings of, uh, uh, to, uh, of today's ayah, uh, Malik in Nes, the king, the, the name of God is the king. Uh, okay. Uh, this name, uh, I love this name really a lot. Uh, we, 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 uh, I mentioned this before, lots of time before, but I, I want to review it with you. This great name of God contains all other names inside. Allah's the real king who has the power, the pride, the mighty, the authority. No one can change his will. No one can overrule his judgment. He rules this life and the life after. He's perfect himself and he and what he does is perfect too. And Allah's rich. Good people worship doesn't add anything to him and bad people behavior doesn't hurt him. And any king in the, in the world would be a king for certain period. Then even he will die or his authority would be taken away of him. But Allah is the real king ever and forever in this life and the life after. And la ilaha illallah means no king but Allah, no worship but Allah, no, no creator but Allah. When we believe in this name, we know that we have to follow him and to love, by, to, to follow him by love and fear, meantime. Because we, we know he is holy and powerful and he is merciful. Although Allah doesn't need anybody, anybody, but he never let us go down. He always give us second chances. Allah doesn't oppress anyone. Allah apply power and mercy to all his creatures. Allah doesn't deal with, with his creatures by power only, never. Allah deal with his creatures with mercy, justice, and power meantime. And Allah is the king of all kingdoms. Allah, he make whoever he wants a king and he take it away of, of uh, who, who, whoever he wants. He honors, honors whomever he wants and he humiliates whomever he wants. So we can ask God, please God, don't allow anyone to take anything you gave us from us or assault us. Allah is so near. He can hear our dua, our sorrow, our fears, our tears. And he, he hides for us what we cannot even imagine. Allah sees us from inside, our thoughts, our intentions, while others see us from outside. That's why we talk before uh, to purify our heart, because this is this is where our, our God where God looks to us. He looks inside us. He, 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 so we have to purify us from inside, as as much as we we care about our outside. So, uh, Allah loves all people people who obey him. And Allah hates people who doesn't obey him. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Oh, Jazakallah khaira. Uh, I like the way you, uh, you make a difference between the, uh, like, uh, the king among the human, like people who claim that they are the king of this country. And the king of all human, which is completely different. And I remember a story, one caliph, Harun al-Rashid. And you know, he owns a huge 
uh, empire from the east to the west. So his brother, his brother was uh, someone uh, who spent his life in worship. So he didn't, you know, care about uh, uh, being among the royal family. So he told him one day, advise me. He said, okay, what happened to you? Um, if you spend if you spend days without uh, a cup of water and you become thirsty, what are you going to do? He said, I may give my half kingdom just for a cup of water because I can't live thirsty. No, I can't be thirsty. No. He said, okay, what about if you stay a couple of days without urination and that water is stuck within your kidney? He said, I'm going to offer the half of my empire to the one who would help me to release and uh, to get this out of my body. He said, you're nothing. So your kingdom, your empire doesn't worth a cup of water to drink and another cup of water to be released away from your body. So there are many examples about uh, like those who like who claim that they are kings and they control people and they do this and this and that. So I like the way you have uh, like explained that, mashallah. And then you went to the purification of the heart. And the following verse is going to talk about the purification um, and what happened to people. So this surah is about how to care about your heart, how to protect your heart, how to guard your heart against what might affect your heart and then it will not be purified. So we are going to, inshallah, explain that more in the, into details. So Jazakallah uh, khairan. That was a nice uh, addition. Yes, uh, Layla. Yes, uh, Sister Tony, go ahead. Okay. Um, Allah shows us every day that he is the Lord of mankind with death. No one has the right and no one has the power to delay it or stop it. Everyone and everything, we, we would all have to submit to it. Um, I come I came across this many times when it comes to when it comes to health. Um, for for example, one lady that I knew, she had um, no type of medical qualifications or anything, but she used to um, she used to swear by this by this certain water, you know. Oh, you know, it cures cancer, it cures stomach diseases, and reverses infertility and so on. You know, she had cancer and then she got rid of it. But when she started making those claims, you know, everybody jumped on the bandwagon and lo and behold, they found out that it was a, it was, is basically a scam. And then she died months later from the very same disease that she said the water was curing and the water was doing this, the water was doing that. Um, to get to the point is that she got, she basically put herself in a position of worshiping the water. So later on, um, Later on, you know, I basically I said that part. So we have to be careful, you know, who we take our knowledge from and, and we have to see refuge in going overboard when, and going to the extreme when it comes to our health because, you know, it's a lot of things out, of the, out here who, a lot of things and a lot of people who are just leading us into scams and not even, and they don't even believe in the law at all. And they don't know their limits to, you know, they don't, they don't worship a law. So they know that, they don't know that, he is the Lord of mankind, so they worship anything. So we we just have to seek refuge into um, falling into being victim of of those type of people. Doctor Hassan, go ahead. Um, I I would like her to elaborate more on. Uh, uh, there are the ayah who do not believe in Allah, or 
they guide people to the falsehood. Um, could you elaborate more on that? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you were saying, or I didn't hear what you were saying. Yeah, you 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 were saying there are people who make dawah, but they don't believe in Allah and they don't worship Allah. Yes. Uh, how how did you know that? Or he wants you to explain what you mean when you say uh, a people who call themselves callers but they're guiding you to the wrong path. Speak more about that. Yeah, you said they don't worship and they don't believe. Well, the example that I was given, that person, she was she was a, basically a Kafir. So she oh. didn't believe Allah. Oh, subhanAllah. So it's like meditation, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we okay, have to be yeah. careful who we're taking our claims from as far as like in, in medical and health. Because exactly. a lot yeah. of people are just going into like a lot of different scams. And then it's it's not even really that, you know, they just start worshiping that one thing and then everybody just forget about Allah. And then we if we fall into that, you know, we'll fall into the same category with the cappers. Exactly. So um, the, like this, uh, these people, they came from uh, mostly from uh, Asia. Um, so they have their own ideology and uh, they teach people uh, yoga and uh, meditation. Um, and unfortunately, some Muslims, they follow them. And they go to their club. And they join them. And then they start to say, mm -hmm, and they do the same thing, subhanAllah. So we have to be careful. I agree with you. Um, but in the meantime, also, we there are uh, people who are among Muslims. They are extreme Sufi. Um, they may be very close to shirk. So we need to be aware of that uh, because they have deviated from the right path. So I, I asked you this question so uh, because I thought that you might you have you have might uh, known uh, or introduced to some of them. So be careful about your religion. Because there are people who may guide you to the wrong path. Trust me. Like grave worshiper. Um, so stick with Quran and Sunnah. Whatever the Prophet ﷺ had done and his companion, this is where we take our Islam from. Other than that, it is questionable. Jazakallah khair and sister, because you have opened that. And then we say, the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind, nobody can take his position. Nobody can be in the, that category. Nobody can claim that I bring help, I support you, I, uh, I can uh, do this for you, uh, I can... Uh, like uh, cure your illness, no, no, no. everything on the hand of Allah. Everything in the hand of Allah. So the Lordship, we have to have the oneness of the Lordship of Allah and uh, the oneness of the Godship of Allah. And he's the only king, the king of all the king. Everything belongs to him. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah fiqh. Um, I think we have one more person left, and that's Brother Ahmad. What is your comment, yeah, Sister Layla? Yeah, I agree. You said it. I mean, subhanAllah. I mean, you got it. We have to, you know, be very, very careful, guys, you know, when it comes to seeking knowledge, which you all know. Like, there's a lot of people that pretend to be calling you to the Sunnah or the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when instead they're calling you to the Sunnah of someone else. They are, you know, some fatwas. Exactly. They, they found you said, the you said Sunnah of someone else. Please yes, elaborate exactly. on that. Yes. They well, need to I, hear know, this. Their examples, you know, what they deem to be lawful and unlawful. Uh, for example, like we talked about the fatwa that uh, they had put out saying that it's okay to eat pork 
as long as you cook it for a certain amount of time at a certain temperature, you know, you have removed the pure purities, impurities. Allah says it's haram. If we can't cook it, we can't eat it, we can't buy it, we can't sell it. That's the end of it. Or then these fatwas about medical marijuana. You know, uh, you're going to blindly follow this sheikh who says it's okay. You know, when Allah clearly tells us, you know, the Prophet wasalam, said that Allah did not put a cure to anything and anything that he made haram. But we, instead of listening to the Prophet wasalam, we're going to listen, you know, to uh, the fatwas of these other people who claim that they're calling you to the true Islam when they're really calling you to their sunnah, their example, their belief, their ideology. So we have to be I need I need to add more examples. Yes, go um, ahead. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, the European European Union in Europe uh, they said uh, they, they they have uh, legalized and uh, they issued uh, rules and regulation to add insects powder. To food products, insects powder to food products, and scientifically, this is, has been have been approved to be healthy because of the uh, protein and vitamins and other stuff. And uh, I am in this area, like uh, food science, and I have seen professors around me who has spent their life studying that but if we let every scientist to guide our life there is no uh, limit a sky is their limit so they can study everything and then in the future they will have food products mixed with insects powder but uh, when we look at the regulation in the holy in, in Islam, you will find out that it is forbidden for Muslim to eat uh, insects. So we have to be careful about that, and uh, for many reasons. And uh, I'll I'll share with you some uh, like uh, one of my experience. 25 years ago, I was asked to have a project about mad cow disease. So they figure out that mad cow disease uh, happened because of the feed of the cow was the pie products of a slaughterhouse and including bone powder um, and uh, it was infected by Brian, and this is the cause of mad cow disease. Brian is in between virus and protein, and then it was carried on in the flesh of uh, the meat to human, so that they become infected and their brain become spongy, and they died. So um, they spent maybe 30 years or 40 years to feed cows with this. And then later on, they found out that is that it is a disaster. So um, are we going to spend the same years to feed people with insects powder until we find a disaster? So that's why Allah, when he guide us, when he say, this is forbidden, even if you don't know the reason, just stay away from it. Pork at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they didn't know the reason, but they stayed away from it. Now we can find some reasons. Okay? So that's why we have to be careful about what is forbidden and what is not forbidden. Jazakallah khair, Sister Layla. I was not going to say that, but it came uh, across. Alhamdulillah. Well, I think that's all the comments we have from the people here. And mashallah, you guys had some pretty good comments today. 
I can see you guys did the homework today. Um, did he log? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What did you guys think about it? I mean, is this helping you to better understand uh, and to better concentrate and better? Uh, uh, is it strengthening your relationship with Allah, understanding what these words that you're saying in Arabic actually mean? Is it helping you guys? Yes, I think it's helping me. Um, it makes me think deeper <laughs> in mm -hmm. all of these new uh, names that I'm learning and the attributes of Allah and what they represent and all of this. You know, I mean, this is really powerful. Um, dealing with these um, sores. Um, now it's really giving me a sense when, it, when I'm using them in my prayers, what it really means and how it can help me and build me up, you know, spiritually. So I'm learning a lot from all of this. It's giving me a deeper way of thinking I've never thought before. So we came to the last question, which is, um... Give me one word. How do you feel about these verses when you recite it after having this uh, session? So in one word, try to explain what comes to your heart when you recite these verses. Okay, let's start with Sabrine. Go ahead, Sabrine. First, out of inspiration, because it, 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 I find it inspiring, so inspiring, because each week I seem to be learning something new, okay, something so new, and it's, it's bringing me closer, it appears to be closer to a lot, and what I should be learning, that's probably why I, I brought up the uh, names of a lot, because I was thinking of the attributes and, and, and its names, and it's it was really I'm fine. I'm really learning. I'm learning from this class. So your wording is inspiration, right? Yes. That's uh -huh. a good word. Next. Okay, uh, brother uh, Noor, what's what word comes to your mind? One word. Sister Zarina, one word. Protect it. Protected. Good job. Because you say Rabbi yeah. Nas, Ilahi Nas, Malik Nas. Okay. Hmm. Brother Noor. Guard it. Guard it. Okay. MashaAllah. Guard it. Okay. Latifa. I feel more closeness, the word I would use when I make actually make my prayers. I can feel like I know what I'm praying about more now. So I say closeness is my word. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Sister Cardi. The word for me is forgiven because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiven for us humans and our errors. Okay, Sister Jamila. I would say awareness. Now that I know that this God is more powerful than I know, I have to be aware of when I pray and whenever I'm doing something of the obligations, I have to be aware that I have to do this and it has to come directly from my heart and my soul. Yeah, good job. So uh, forgiveness, because he cares about people, he's, uh, because he's the Lord, he's a God, he's a king. And... Uh, um, The last one, would you remind me of the last word? Awareness, she's more aware. Awareness, exactly. Mm -hmm. Awareness, to become aware with the Lordship, the um, the Godship, and uh, his care about his people. Okay. Uh, he's the king of all the king. So if you believe in that, so you feel that, uh, because Rabb, the Lord, meaning like uh, I told you, in Arab language, they say, Rabbul Bayt, the Lord of the house, the father. And the mother is the Lord of the house, the housewife. Um, so do you think your father and mother can um, like do something to harm you 
while you are your child what about Allah تبارك وتعالى the Lord so awareness awareness of his care and his mercy and his control his power jazakallah khair good Alhamdulillah, sister um, uh, Tony, your words. Caution. You're more cautious. More cautious. Good. That's a good one. And and this will will uh, will take us to the next verse, inshallah. To be cautious about what is having in our heart. Good job. Sister uh Fame, what your word? Feeling safe. Safe. Alhamdulillah. Faith, yes. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's all of it, everybody. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Very good words. So Jazakum Allah khaira. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. I will say reliance because more reliance because he's the only protector, the only guider, and the only helper. The only one to rely on, right? Yes. Jazakallah khaira. Okay. Yeah. Any addition? Any contribution? Anyone else? Try to bring on word. How about captivating? He's more captivating. So these uh, surahs help you to feel more captivated with Allah. You're more captivated by Allah. Or with him because of yes. his his, his um, attributes, his lordship. Okay. Anyone else? Noor. I mean, nobody. That's it. That's everyone. Okay. Well, so I, I I wish to uh, to have uh, people. Um, bring more contribution. If you don't want to say it, you can just write it on the chat. That's fine. So going to the next verse, um, if somebody wants to add something. Uh, Dr. Asim, I don't know if um, I could continue. I was coming in kind of late to the class for the for the contribution, not the word, but- You missed how that I other could. part. Did you do the homework? Yeah, I did, but I was late to the okay, contribution part. So um, when I think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the creator of all things, I think of the beauty of the earth, the beauty of the universe. And I also think of the things that are not so beautiful, like death, sickness, murders, you know, things that happen. And um, like, for instance, the murder of a child, and it makes my mind wonder sometimes, which I stuff it a lot, I shouldn't do, you know, who am I, right? I said, why would a child need to die? And I stuff it a lot. Allah knows best, and we cannot understand what he does. Like, we have zero right to question what he desires to do with his creation. And it just makes you ponder of his greatness. It makes me so humble. It makes me put my head to the ground and ask for forgiveness and for his mercy because humanity is just so weak and we are dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for absolutely everything. So that was all I was just trying to say with my contribution. Thanks so much. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, if it is murdered, um, so um, uh, the one who murders somebody needs to receive punishments. Uh, but for the mother and for the parents, they should believe that it happened for a wisdom and for a reason. And uh, they should face this with patience. Um, that's how I understand your contribution. Sister Leia? Yeah, I guess that, that's what you were saying, right, uh, Kadi? Yeah, the, the wisdom behind, you know, the deaths, like, for instance, about Prophet Moses, when he was, um, he, he was saying that he was the most knowledgeable, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't like that, and he sent them to look for a person that had more knowledge than him, like that, that situation. Yes, that, yes. That, the, the story that, of the Prophet was... Yeah. Uh, 
with someone who received more knowledge about something. Yes, I agree with you. So um, like he didn't he didn't like that. Like Allah was like, what do you mean you're the most knowledgeable? You didn't say Allah knows best. And so we should do the same. You know, Allah knows best whether we live, whether we die, whether we wake up, whether we lose everything, whether we come, whether we go. So and you're so, saying that as the master, we have to accept that Allah knows best as master over all of us. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Whatever Allah uh, decree for, to happen with us, we don't question it. We just understand that he doesn't put a burden on us that is too great for us to bear. And we handle it, deal with it with dignity and grace and don't question it because he's the master of all our affairs. He's the master over us and everything that occurs with us. Yeah, you're right. I guess that's you're what right. she's trying to say. Okay. Yes. Um, so uh, let's move to the next verse. Okay. And this is for next week. From the evil of the whisperer. The one who whisper in the heart of uh, people and then disappear when they remember Allah. So when they say dhikr, when they say Allah, when they th say astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah, they disappear. So from the evil of the one who whisper, from the whisperer, and that can be um, from mankind or from jinn? From jinn or from human? Um, jinn can whisper to people in the heart of people, um, try to, um, you know, uh, tempt them to do mistakes and sins, to do haram things. But Allah says, Shaitan is weak. Shaitan is not that strong. He try and try and try is not strong, but he's not strong. The one who can be stronger than uh, the jinn is the human Shaitan, because we have Shaitan from jinn and from human. Um, because if you have a friend, they can whisper to you and call you day and night and try to convince you to do something. And then at the end, you'll find yourself in a wrong way, in a wrong path. And it happened a lot because friends can convince each other. So we have to be careful of that. And we have to, you know, we have to care more about whom to get along with. Because tell me, uh, if, if, if I want to you, if I want to know who you are, um, I look at your friends. By looking at your friends, I know what kind of person you are. So, من شرر الوسواس الخناس from the evil, from the evil, of whisper, uh, whether from jinn or from human. And these, they disappear when you remember Allah, when you say astaghfirullah. So if somebody guide you, if somebody ask you to go with him, to drink wine, to go to the nightclub, uh, to have a good time, to have fun, to do this and this and this, um, Try to answer him, Astaghfirullah, uh, this is wrong. Um, Alhamdulillah, I can do that. So by remembering Allah, and you say, A'udhu Billah, min al shaytan al rajim And sometimes I say, I seek refuge in Allah from you, from your evil. I say that. If somebody asks me to do something wrong, I say, I seek refuge in Allah from your evil. Get away from me. Yeah, you can do that. So inshallah, this is for next week. And mashallah, we have a wonderful class today. Um, any question before I leave? Or any contribution, any comments? 
Sister Layla? Yes. Oh. Go ahead, Zarina. Go ahead, Sister Zarina. Yes, I feel like um, reflecting on or pondering on Allah's names and ayats, like the way we're doing it in this with these surahs, is um, necessary at least month, weekly. And if you can do it daily, it's like a muscle. I feel like if you kind of get lazy and you relax and don't do it for a while, you get rusty or it's a little harder. But each time that we do um, do this on a regular basis, I find that it's, it gets a little easier. And at the same time, I realize like, oh my gosh, I need so much work. <laughs> and it's, it's like a nice challenge, you know, and uh, yeah, it just makes you feel closer to Allah. Yeah, it happened to everybody. And uh, that's what the prophet told his companion because they said, uh, when we stay with you and uh, speak about like Quran and Sunnah and remember this, we are different. And when we go to our life, uh, we forget that or we don't uh, like, we are not at the same status. So, uh, because the companion didn't forget, but they tried to compare their level of faith while they are here versus in different places. So um, I agree with you. Um, you can have more reflection, inshallah, during the week. So um, Sister Layla, I, I would recommend, so you do preparation in the middle of the week. And then yeah. there, there, at the there, end there, of the yeah, week. We are. We've been working all week on this. That's why. Okay. Yeah, been doing Sister really Layla, good. mashallah. Because mashallah. the class, uh, uh, the Tawhi class I teach at six is dealing with the same, it's the same thing. It's the same. We're, we're breaking down the names, the words of Allah and stuff. So they've been doing this all week and I'm so proud of them. They did a great inshallah. job. Inshallah. And yeah. I promise you when I have more time, inshallah, I can make two eyes a week, inshallah. Yes, yes. This is a Jazakallah good khaira. That's a good point. Barakallah fiqh. Any other comments or question? Yes, Dr. Awesome. I just wanted to ask a question. Um, even though like those kind of heavy disasters that goes on, couldn't it also be a warning to those that it's not happening to, but Yes, they do have those that is not happening to. Yes, they do have their calamities in a different form, but can't that be also a warning for those that's not having a heavy disaster? Yes, calamity. I agree with you. Yes, yes, you you have added a very important point. Yes, um, because um, uh, Muslims, they should look at uh, people around them and got lessons, got wisdom. Uh, got awareness of what is happening. Yeah, these are the signs of Allah. Yes, Allah yes. Like I said, as a sign to all of us that he's not happy. He's not happy with us as a ummah. It's a sign. He says in the Quran, send, he sends calamities, you know, as a sign that he's not happy. I mean, look at the state. It's not hard. I mean, you look at the people, the Muslims in your community. Look at how people, we are lax. We're not practicing Islam like we should. The Akita, our allegiance is not right. We don't f follow the Sunnah. We don't pray the way the Prophet Wasallam taught us. We commit sins. We celebrate birthdays. So, yeah, that's why I said it's a wake-up call. Whenever a law sends a calamity, now if he hits that country in particular, that's because they doing some stuff that they ain't got no business doing. And remember, guys, the prophet said, look towards the end of the days. Most of the calamities will occur in Iraq, Syria, Turkey, that part of the world. So it's no mistake that the majority of the, the horrific stuff is coming from that part of the world. The prophet said it would because they're the ones that's really, really taking the religion in a weird way. Islam will, will rise in the West. It'll fail in the East. Y'all know those hadiths, okay? But it's a wake-up call to all of us that we need to get ourselves together. But if it hits that place directly, Allah is really upset there. Right. And the That's people there know doing. why. That's a Muslim country. Yeah. But prostitution is legal. That's a Muslim country. Alcohol is legal. That's a Muslim country. Y'all know Harun Yakya? Harun Yakya was Turkish. He made all these videos on Allah and the Quran, under, wrote books on understanding the Quran and all that. And he ran, he was a playboy. Ran a prostitution ring. 
Uh, he's he's in the prison now. Yeah, so. he's in prison. So you know, it ain't no mystery why a law hitting the Muslim yeah. countries. A law said he gonna hit us because yeah, we know better. To be fair, so um, yeah, these, but, this country is ruled by uh, good people, and uh, they have been trying hard to uh, to change the country. So, but, um, but look at the people. The rulers can only do so much. Like I said, it's a big. The political stuff is not, exactly. It doesn't exactly. matter. Like the law says, whenever we fail, to whoever's at fault. Whenever yeah, people, still, people is still forbid evil. This yeah. is going to happen. It's just it's the cotter of a law, but we learn from it, and he's going to judge us individually. But we all learn from it and try to make it better. Try not to make these mistakes, but it's going to get worse. It's going to be in everywhere, all over the world. All of us are going to be getting it. It's going to be earthquakes everywhere on the planet soon. Y'all know those hadiths. We went over them. Yeah, the, the more the more we get close to the here after, the more yeah. earthquakes and volcanoes and disasters yeah. and uh, you but name that them. part of the world yeah. in particular, the prophet pointed out. So the the, the bot the bottom line is the bottom line. Try to be stable on La Ilaha illallah Muhammad exactly. Rasulullah and on the true Tawheed. Exactly. Whenever we leave the true Tawheed, that's what y'all learning. This is what's gonna happen. Because there will be a time that you need to, you mean to escape from everything around you and to stick with your belief. There, there's a lot because of fitna, it too, fitna guys. will be surrounding you. Yeah. If y'all don't know, uh, that part of the world has a lot of innovation. Y'all learning about innovation in the tall heat class. Where do y'all think is happening at all that stuff? Remember now, man uh, married to man and uh, woman married to woman. Not only that, but uh, um, the uh, they have this marriage to uh, animals, to dogs. Yes, they're doing that too. That bestiality. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. All that stuff is happening, so it ain't no. Can you imagine? Can you it. imagine? Can you imagine a human being like human yeah. who's honorable by Allah? Is bad. They, they get they get married to they get married to trained uh, dogs. Yeah, stuff from Allah. Wow. Stop for we this crap, we gonna law is gonna do this to us, of course. Yeah, so it's a wake up call to all of us as a nation, as a umma, all of us. But you gotta. So how many of us take heed? That's the question. Very few. You guys are alhamdulillah, but what's the majority of the Muslims doing? You, know, you always so read the whole Quran and reflect on the whole Quran. And read the, the the story of the prophet, the companion, and uh, try to imitate them. Try to follow their footsteps. Yeah. Um, any other comments? Yeah. And by the way, guys, yeah. since you all did so well with this, this is your, your Tawhi class for today too, because this this is all I was going to do is go over another name. But since we've done swell with this, this is all included in our class. You know, this will all be the, the top tall heat class. Yeah, because you guys did good. I'm proud of you. Jazakum Allah khairan. So we will end so the class at this point. more participation. Like Dr. Asim said, though, a lot of you guys are just sitting in here and y'all don't participate. I just want to let you know you're just harming yourself. Because so the most. Yeah, these people are growing. And their closeness and awareness of Allah, you guys want to grow too. You know. And we have a simple question. The simple question is try to come up with just one word mm -hmm. to explain and to express your feeling after you read the these verses. These verses. So inshallah, you can prepare for next time. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Okay, for those of you on Facebook,